Hey, look at this. Couldn't help themselves, could they? One last hurrah before we shut the place down. This really can't wait, mate. There's a little blue penguin population nesting not far from here, and they'll gladly take this for food. Okay, that looks manageable. Let's clean this up and take the photo. Then we can talk hunting again. Well, as you can imagine, being featured in a host of box office hits has done wonders for our profile with tourists. Problem is, a lot of the people who come are just here to take a few photos, dump a heap of rubbish, and then leave unceremoniously. So we end up with messes like this one. I'd like to say that we've become the victim of our own success, but that's letting me off the hook. Right, there should be a standover on the other end of the beach with rubbish bags and a picker. We went to all the trouble of installing these, and they still couldn't be bothered. Looks like they had quite the little feast. if you showed them some of what I've seen out here. Birds with stomachs so full of plastic they can't eat. Hmm. South Island University. I knew it. Way too many people around here who have never respected this place. You can leave them over by the stand. There, spick and span. You made quick work of it. usable tent no sense wasting it anyway i've had enough of this and we need to ensure that we're attracting the right kinds of tourists not just day trippers from christchurch out on their school holidays it's okay for people to come here and leave no trace but it'd be better if we could rely on them to help us with our conservation goals so hunters seem like the natural target audience our deer and goat populations need constant culling and you better believe I have more faith in people who love the wilderness to respect the place than kids up to no good. At the risk of sounding like an old fuss pot. <laughs> Speaking of, let's do what we came to do and grab that photo. use of lighting I may have to hire you to help out on my next book project if I ever finish the current one 
There's a lot of theories about where these boulders came from. Volcanic activity, lightning, even aliens. I've heard them all over the years. The boffins will tell you they were formed over 60 million years ago on the sea floor, like pearls. But that's not the whole story. When people first arrived in New Zealand, they took their staple crop with them, kumara, otherwise known as sweet potato. Unfortunately for them, the weather in this part of the country isn't exactly conducive to growing much, and the tubers withered and died. So they sent word to the Polynesian homeland, and a canoe set sail with a hardier crop. But it was caught in an intense storm just off the east coast. Each wave that struck it was so large that it made a new hill. Those are the ones you'll see further inland, and all of the cargo went overboard. And that's what these boulders are. Petrified kumara, eel baskets, calabashes. The canoe itself formed the reef further up. Moral of the story? Things have long shelf lives. A lesson I wish someone had taught those kids. Right, feeling warmed up? Good. It's time for you to show me what you can do. Camera on? Then you should have everything you need. I got Josh to set it up. He told me to tell you that it's state-of-the-art, equipped with Wi-Fi, so any footage you grab is automatically uploaded to our server. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I guess I'll be able to see it on here. No pressure, then. There's good hunting in the whole of this area, from up around where you cleared out the props earlier to closer to the beach. Take your pick. But just one thing. We want it to show up nice on camera, so no minnows. Try for something at least 30 kg. The larger, the better. Should be no problem for a hotshot like you. No word back from our friends in Hollywood regarding the props, by the way. My guess is that some townie thought it'd be a hoot to grab them for their crib. But I'm not keen on the idea of someone wandering around when we're supposed to be closed to visitors. Anyway, nothing you need to worry about right now. Just focus on those killer shots. What a beaut! And that chase! Gonna make for some great footage. You're living up to your reputation, I'll give you that. Not a lot of people around here think that hunting's heyday peaked in the 70s and 80s. Back when you'd get scores of daredevils out in helicopters gunning down dead three at a time. That's not the done thing anymore, for a whole host of reasons. But these days we need hunters more than ever. And I'm glad I have you on board to help us show the world that. You've got a fan here, Hoa. Josh gave me a hand posting some footage from your hunt to the reserve chat group. And it caught the eye of our resident sharpshooter, Melanie Murphy. Oh, Melanie's the one who taught me to hunt. She's retired now. But back in the day, she worked out on those helicopters with the best or worst of them. Tough as nails and with a sharp tongue to boot. We, uh, we had a bit of a falling out 25 years ago. One of the choppers came down with us in it. So I injured my leg. I won't go into it, but we should never have taken off that day, and Melanie knew it. Well, these days we're cordial to each other, but not much else. Anyway, my mum always told me to let bygones be bygones and all that. Melanie's a better hunter than I'll ever be, advanced age notwithstanding. So I'll do my best to pass on whatever I've learnt from her gratis. You're welcome. Right, back on track. Sorry to ask again, but I need you to do me a favour. No, it's not more cleaning up, don't worry. Head to the outpost I've marked on your hunter, mate, and I'll explain on the way. <laughs> 